Welcome to Bacon Network, where you tell your story. This is the first ever edition with James Thorpe. Yes, sir. Hey, man, he's going to Tennessee State, man. So just first I want to say, man, when, when I, last year when I first started working at the paper, I was hearing about the things, man. I was like, people was him like, man, James Thorpe is like, he's the deal. Like, he's big, you know what I'm saying? He got a physical style. Then the first time I came and saw you was at uh, – Y'all played Trinity. You hit two home runs. I'm like, man, oh, yeah. I got to see oh, him yeah. in pads, man. And then I seen you in pads. You had that Stephen Red Stiff. I can't remember the school because you had like a stiff arm. It was against a red this team. This year, oh, it was against, uh, I think that was Mount Zion. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was crazy. Was Mount Zion. I need, I need the flicks from that. So whoever got them got to send it to me. Someone, I think the other dude, other dude to take the pictures from probably got it. So it's a video. Like, it's on, it's, it's a, a it was oh. video. It was on, um, on a, on a Tune Times Herald sports page. I ain't even I know. Tell you. I know right. we had John John on it. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. okay, 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 okay. Yeah, man. Um, congrats on the commit to Tennessee State. Appreciate Just appreciate tell it. me a little about what it, what went into that. Um, uh, what went into it? It was at first. I, I feel bad, but at first I really didn't know who Eddie George was because I'm not big into watching. Like I watch like highlights, but. I was never the type to like look back and like look for like you know one of the greats like him, so I hear I, I get the offer and he's like you know who Eddie George is right, coach neighbors I'm like oh, who is that, and then we got the um, the old line coach right there he turns around he's like what you know like you don't know who that is and I'm like no and we're at, we're at like halftime of um, we were playing Whitfield, and I'm like oh I gotta look who it is real quick I look him up I see. Ohio State running back, Heisman Trophy winner, NFL vet. And I'm like, and I'm looking, I'm like, he built just like me, like he's a big back like me. So I'm like, so I'm already in my already in my head. I'm like, oh yeah, that, that, that could be like that could be it right there. And this is like, I said like maybe two months prior to before I even like went up there, visited anything like that. You know. So just speak about the visit, like what was the campus like? Uh, the campus, I would. The campus, no one was on campus because they were, I think that was the beginning of the break because they get out early and they go back late. And, but I liked the campus a lot. It was, it was cold, man. I didn't even know it snowed up there. It's cold up there, man. Um, but they're doing a lot of new stuff. They got a lot of new renovations going on. They're building new dorms. They're trying to get a, they're in the process of getting a new football field built in because right now they play, uh, they have a contract with the uh, Titans, so they play in Nissan mm -hmm. Stadium right now. So that's big right there, but yeah, they're trying to get all that done. They just they got a lot of new stuff going on on campus. Really. So they're renovating, they're yeah. renovating dorms and all that. Yeah, they're getting a new like a whole new little dorm system, all that, and yeah, it should should be pretty nice, man. It should be pretty nice. So I know who was talking was you and your mom, and you said we were kind of on the fence going to Tennessee State when you first heard the news. Uh, this is like uh, this is uh, taking it back to like when I was straight baseball. Like my mom was like. You should probably look into an HBCU, and I'm like, nah, because you usually like looking back at it, like you don't get the good reps, like you don't hear about the good reps from the HBCU unless you like just hearing about it from the outside. You don't know like what it's really like unless you look into it or go to one or talk to somebody about it. Like you wouldn't be able to grasp how it is. You're kind of just like, oh, I don't hear about them, so why would I want to go there? Right, like, right, type thing. And that's what I was. That's I ain't gonna. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, why would I want to go there? And I. And after that, I started looking into it, and like further and further along, I'm like, that's not like that's not even it's not a bad idea at all. Like I think I want to go to one now. I think I was more leaning more towards going to one other than going to a different school like a, a, a PWR. Yeah. So this was before Travis Hunter signed. So mm -hmm. now that Travis Hunter has signed, which I guess you know kind of makes it come full circle. How does? What do you feel like? You going to HBCU? Do you feel like that's? Do you feel like you're leading the legacy to break down the door to have other other athletes from this area go to HBCU? Like, what what do you feel? You know, what I'm saying it's obviously bigger than yourself at this point. I definitely, I definitely do because I mean, whether I know it or not, there's definitely a lot of people that look up to me. Like I know, like some middle schoolers that look up to me, and that even if they want to play at the next level. I don't want them to like knock at HBCU like oh I don't want to go there. I want them to like be like oh I want to go there. That's like that's what I want to do. Like I see other people doing it. Oh Travis Hunter can do it. James can do it. So and so can do it. Like why 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 wouldn't I want to do it? Like 
Yeah, that's that's kind of how I see it. So you think? How long do you think it'll take for HBCU to start playing the Power Five, the George, or the SEC, Georgia, Alabama's? Shoot, I think it'll be within the next probably three years, I say, because all the transfers that are coming from P5s, all the players that are now like flipping to uh, go to such such sad school to go to play for like great coaches like Eddie George and Deion Sanders. Why wouldn't you want to put them on a schedule? Like. At a point, at a point, Jackson State is near a Power Five team with all the transfers and players they have. It's a bunch of Power Five guys out there, so like they might as well go ahead schedule them unless they're scared or something like that. Right, right. right. I, I feel like it's gonna end up being like that once they like realize like, oh, I need to go play with them and like, cause it's gonna be big. once they realize it's bigger than them, bigger than them, uh, they go start playing for these schools and then. Teams gonna start backing up because they're gonna get they're gonna get a little bit too good. Nah, they're gonna get a little too good. Have we talked to Eddie? Oh yeah, oh yeah, he's cool, real nice guy. He wasn't what he wasn't what I expected, but it, what you mean? You know, you you run into a. I'm big, but he was that man was big. I'm just <laughs> like <"Ugh,"> like <laughs> real like I don't even know, but he was real. It was real nice. It was it was yeah, it was it was different from what I was expecting, but nothing bad. How you feel like? Is because obviously he's compiled back like you. How do you feel like? Has he talked to you about like you know this running style, or has it just been more of like welcome to the team? It's been more of like I kind of like see myself in you. I see like I see we are the same type of back. And the uh, running back coach there actually his name uh, Coach Pearson. He actually uh he I think they may have played together. I don't know if they played together, but I know they he was a running back at Ohio State too. So they're both on like the same wavelength. So I I'm, I'm assuming like. Something Coach Pearson tells me is the exact same thing Coach Eddie would tell me. So I, I don't think it's too far off. I think, I think, yeah, I think it's both about the same thing. That's dope, man. I really like that. Um, are you going to play baseball at Tennessee State? Are you just focusing on football? I definitely would, but they don't have a baseball team. They have a softball team, but no baseball. I think they. I don't remember how long ago they discontinued baseball, but that's not the baseball team anymore. Um, I don't think that's something anybody expected at all. Oh, I know I was looking, I was doing my research. You got to do your homework as a reporter. Yep. Uh, you had a lot of high, a lot of high marks on uh, PBR. Um, you had interest from uh, Butler. Uh, I was committed, man. Yeah, committed yeah. to Butler. So what, you just got to walk me through this whole process of being a solid baseball uh, uh, candidate to, to not at all. Man, not, it was... Uh, I I, didn't, I definitely don't ex I, I definitely didn't expect to end up right here, but I ain't, I'm not mad that it happened. But I guess I'd always been big on baseball. I played football coming up, and then there was one year I played football, and I was like, I'm done. I don't, I don't want to play anymore. I think it was more like coaches taking it out of me. I was just like, you know what? I'm done playing this. I don't want to play anymore. So I'm playing baseball. I start getting interest from different schools. I ended up talking to him. He was a real, real cool coach. I mean, he's still, like, to this day, he congratulated me when I committed and everything. Still coach uh, Kennedy at Butler. He's a real, real nice guy. One of the coolest coaches I ever talked to, football or baseball. Um, then I ended up committing, I think, August of last year. And then I had to, I was there. My mom, I, I definitely think she kind of knew I was going to end up not even, like, going there. But I, in my head, I'm like, shoot. I mean, it's a good academic school for 100%. It is a little bit expensive, though, because for baseball, you don't get those full offers how you do football, basketball. You get the percentages. But I did end up I, – I got a pretty good percentage, but it, the school was like $70,000 to go there. And I'm like – The scholarship? Nah, but I, well, not, with, uh, not with the scholarship, but just in general, the tuition was up there. And I think without the scholarship, man, I'm not – I don't even remember. I kind of blanked it out my brain, but uh, – Decommitted, and then I was off for a while. I wasn't planning on committing. I had, I had, a, I was actually probably gonna go to like one of the top JUCOs and try and like go from go P5 out of there or try and get drafted or something like that. And then we bring in Coach Neighbors from uh, I think he was at Lagrange, and he's t we're talking like this is before like prior to me, and he was he's like, come play football for me. You are gonna love football. You are gonna love playing for me. You are gonna love playing for this new staff. Go to college for free and all this. I'm like. And at first, I'm like, man, like, what is he talking about? Like, I'm like, uh, I'm like, go on with all this. 
So I'm like, so he's putting, he's talking to me all this stuff, making me like, I remember there was this one time he had signed me up for a, um, a rivals camp, an MVP camp. I told him I'll go. I never went because I, because at that point I'm still like I don't want to play, and I just, I just, t- I just told him so he could just get off me. I'm like oh, I'm yeah. not going, man. Yeah. And then I actually start, I meet him, start playing for him, practicing with him, get his energy. We start mixing that together. I'm like, man, I like playing with this man. Like, real good guy. One of my, one of my favorite coaches. One of the coolest coaches you'll meet by far. One of the most energetic coaches. He'll love you like, yeah, his own son. Like he loves his backs, man. Like. It was it was really cool playing for him, and, um, and he's like, and I knew he had uh, real good connections with recruiting, because he coached uh, Tank Bisbee, Tank Bisbee, who's at Auburn right now, and I remember like we're at the Auburn seven on seven in the summer, we tearing it up actually, and uh, before we even started playing, I see I look at my uh, corner of my eye, I see Tank, I ain't want to turn around, I'm like oh that's Tank, <laughs> but he over there talking to me, he's like James, come over here, I want you to meet somebody, I'm like man. <laughs> I'm like, man. That's crazy. Auburn started running back, and I'm like, yeah. So then I started talking to schools, started getting interest, started getting a few offers and that. And I'm waiting, I'm waiting, trying to press it out, see what I can get. Because I, cause I don't have, like, that, like, football film or, like, the football training. I'm a bit, like, raw when it comes to football because I, I never had any of that because I didn't play freshman, sophomore re- year, really, or junior year. Like, senior year was, like, the only year I had to make it happen. Me and Coach Neighbors had to make it happen. He made it happen, man. So yeah, ended up convinced. Yeah. It's been, that's that. So I just take me through because I know baseball and football is uh, it's two different sports. So what's it like? You know what I'm saying? When you're on the on the diamond, I know I I, I read the uh, mm-hmm. the New York Times hard article. You say you, you you model your game after Mike Trout. When you go to the plate, you already picturing what you're going to do at the play where you're on defense, you know? Yeah, you, you got to lock in. It's, yeah. uh, I, the baseball is definitely more like more of the mental side than the football. I mean, football is definitely mental, but, like, you can make up for some of the mental, physical strength or physical, like, uh, durability, all that all that kind of stuff. But baseball, if you, you can be as in shape as you want to. If you're not right in the head, you ain't – you're done. You're done because uh, it's, it's hard. It's really hard. And especially once you start like rising up levels and start playing with like some of the best players on the travel ball scene, is like, is you see a 95 every day and it's like, <laughs> you're like, man, this is getting hard. And it starts weeding out kids, kids start quitting and everything, kids start dropping baseball. You know, they're like, no, I don't even want to play anymore. Right. But it's definitely like a, more, a lot more mental preparation. You can't just, I, some people can, but those special, but like, I don't think most people can just roll out of the bed and just go dominate on a baseball field. That's right. a lot different from football. So what's like the the lows? I know sure comes from everybody has the lows. Mm-hmm. How long is the lows and like what does it take to to hit a ninety five or hit that nasty the nasty curveball slide or whatever the pitch is on the mound dealing that day? Some people some people never get out of it. Some people in the head so much like right. they they go down and I mean I personally I know a few people that get like that. They'll go down and they're just like for the rest of the tournament Next tournament, they just down for the whole tournament. Like, they don't even want to hit anymore. They start slamming stuff, slamming helmets. And we're like, come on, calm down. And, you know, they get in their head and they never, I mean, eventually, most of the time they'll come out of it. But some people, like, they never really come out of come out of it like a bad slump. And then it just kind of, like, it ruins them sometimes. But, um, uh, what was I saying again? What were you saying again? I was just saying, like, um, so what's the what's the basically I was asking well, what's the feel like what's the feeling like you pretty much answered it though oh yeah. oh like for me personally like when yeah, I get yeah when you when you're on the play you get that big hit or you get that the diving diving play in the outfield just shoot when you is it's it's different like you make a big hit in the baseball game it's not a lot of things I can compare to like the excitement you get I mean you can score a touchdown in football but you. You can score a lot more of those than you going to hit a 95-mile-per-hour fastball, 95-mile-per-hour fastball hard. Like, you piece it up good, put it in the gap. That's a little bit different now. You get a different feeling from when you do that. But, I mean, you still get it from football, but, like, baseball, that's that's a little different. So what you're saying is you're the Zen master at the plate, bro. <laughs> the Zen master, <laughs> I wish. But I don't, I, don't, I don't, my emotions don't, like, fluctuate too much. Like, I don't ever get, like, too high, too low. I'm not usually the type, like, to get too low. I don't. I, I'm pretty good at controlling everything. 
All right, sir. I know you talked about meeting a lot of people on the on the baseball circuit. I seen you know uh, Andrew Jones, man. So oh yeah, all the all them my boys, uh, and they're like those those that's what I, those are the people I was talking about, like the people that's special that can roll out of bed and just do it. Like not that they don't, not that they don't put work in, right, right, but they just that good. Like uh, one of my boys, Drew, he he's up at Westland. Uh, Tamar, RJ. Uh, RJ goes to um, Pace. Uh, tomorrow goes to uh, he goes to Maze, uh, but they're all projected to go in like like Drew and Tamar are projected to be like top ten picks in the draft like this coming summer, and RJ's projected to be like first second round too. So those That's those true. are some guys right there. He's yeah. just like his daddy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was, I was like man. <laughs> yeah. Take you back to 2017, which really kind of put you on um, the Coyote County scene as being one, being one of the best players in the county. Two touchdowns in the, <laughs> <laughs> in the middle school championship. Man, <laughs> and that was fun, man. I was, that was probably like before I stopped like having fun playing football. That was probably the last time it was like real fun because you out there with all the guys you met in middle school. You know, y'all kicking on the football field, just tearing people up, running people over, scoring touchdowns and all that. That was fun, man. Um, I was trying to I was trying to play with some of them guys again, man. I'm trying to get some over here, man. Yeah. I'm trying to play with some of them, but you know. So how come how come Heritage, Heritage and not you would have went to Northgate, right? Yeah, yeah I would have went to Northgate. So how come Heritage? Uh, I that's a, that's that's interesting how that happened. I just it was kind of like bang bang, like it wasn't even like planned out really. I kind of just ended up here. I kind of I was uh, I was coming home from a baseball tournament like it's like ten o'clock I'm sleeping in the car I get a call because um, two of my boys uh, Braxton Goodwin and Sam Wall they had just came from uh, Noonan and I guess I'd been talking to them a little bit about it and I didn't think they were gonna like put something in motion like that quick I was kind of just like yeah I mean I heard about it I don't know too much about it right. and then I get a call this is when they're still in uh, Gisa or Gisa yeah. however you say it and I'm like I heard you've been thinking about it I was like fuck. It was like one of the coaches or whatever, and then I get a call from a baseball coach, and I'm like, "Oh, what's going on?" And I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I'm a little excited, I ain't gonna lie. And then I, they came, uh, we, I talked to them. It was real cool. It seemed like a real good deal. I mean, like the education here is great. The way they prep you for college is great. They, I think it's a lot, it's a lot better than going to public school, like preparation-wise, because they don't. I don't think it's kind of like on your neck all the way. They give you the freedom and try and like give you the chance to manage your time, right? Because nobody's going to be on you in college right. to manage your time. So you, you get a chance to grow and, like, do it on your own before you get there. And then I came for a shadow day. I, I came and I, like, shadow one of the kids that went here and, like, see what they did throughout the day. I was like, oh, it's kind of nice. I kind of like it over here. I thought I was just, you know, that came. Yeah, it's like a, what's it like? It's kind of like a. A uh, state college kind of feel, not yeah. state college, but like you yeah. know what I mean, like a maybe state college, state small, you know. Yeah. Like you said, y'all got the. Was y'all say, how, what, what's the class schedule like? I mean, y'all don't have like blocks. I mean, yeah, as a senior, you get like uh, they have like a rotating schedule. So like, say you have, so on like a Monday, I'll start off with AAT, then I go to AP World, then I have like anatomy or something, then I have a free block. And then I have like an internship with one of the kindergarten right. teachers, so I go down there and help her. So I was only a senior, only seniors get free blood. This is like a time where you get to chill throughout the day, and then you got like a long lunch. Like it's like an XL, like thirty minutes for you to go get help if you need it, and thirty minutes for lunch. But it, if you don't need it, you can just got like an hour lunch. Seniors can leave campus and all that to go get food. Uh, but you gotta have the privileges. Privileges though, you can't just leave. Like you gotta be on top of your stuff. Like if you slip up, you one of them grades drop, you ain't going anywhere. Right. You going, you going to that XL, you getting that extra help. Um, yeah, so it's cool. Uh, yeah. So how do you feel like with this environment is gonna prepare you to manage the college load and as well as practice? Mm. I think I've been pretty good at managing Tom. Just like in general, I don't, cause I don't like to. I kind of just like to get it done, get it out the way. Even if I don't want to do it, I just do it. He got out the way, so I don't got to worry about it. But uh, I think, I think, I think I won't have as hard of a time as some other people will. 
with like managing it just because that I do go here and that they like the way they make the schedule and the way they like dish out the work for you to do and it's kind of like not only you kind of like off you he don't let him do what he does and he gets the work in he gets the work in uh yeah so I don't think it'll be as hard and then with practice I I may it, I don't think it, I don't think it'd be terrible but it'll definitely be different like it's take some time to adjust to because the practice is definitely obviously going to be more like it's going it's college, D1 college, so it's going to take it's going to be on you. It's going to be hard practice, and you're going to be tired. So you got to figure out how to get it done. So taking a, taking a step back, looking outside of everything, reflecting on all the sacrifices, you know, saying all the all the long trips. What does it mean to you to be at this point, man? Commit to to go places. It feels it, it's like it's like a weight off your shoulder because you don't have to worry about it anymore. But then it's kind of like I'm committed now. I go because like I go to school like first week of June, so I'm about to be up there with grown men, yeah. like real grown men. So I gotta like it's like it's off you, but then at the same time it's another way it's about to drop right on you as soon as you get there. So it's, it's, it's nice for now until yeah. I get into it. Then I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to take a little hiatus and get right out there. Yeah. yeah. I know we was talking off camera earlier about you know they already got you on the weight plan. Yeah. Exercise. So like you said on, on the app, everybody sees if you like if you're doing the workout. If you miss, they gonna see it and they gonna know about it in the coach. Yeah, it's not like that, but it, they encourage you to like upload videos, like your new PRs, all that, and yeah. the, like the guys will reply to it, like "Let's go" type stuff. But they they have a workout for every single day, like Monday, the arms, whatever. But they got it Monday, Monday through maybe Saturday or Friday, one of those. And then like they have like a one of the days would be like an agility day, and he always makes sure he throws some abs in there every single day, <laughs> man. It's not no joke, I will tell you that. But like when I was up there on my visit, he he did show like the credibility that he had, like in transforming players. Like it's, it's definitely gonna work. It's definitely gonna work. I do a lot of cardio. Yeah, you, you have y'all run a lot or what? Just maybe mm, it's not a lot of like maybe when you get up there, but like as as of now, it's not like a lot of long distance. It's more like. Quick, get you faster type thing. Uh, like explosives. Yeah, man. yeah. Like ladder work too, or just? Uh, is that, I'm not sure if there's ladder work. I can't remember. I need to start doing some hills for that explosiveness. Man, yeah. Uh, so what does? I know hills. What what what's like the mechanics behind hills? I know people say run hills, run hills, but like, cause I never played football. I was just basketball. I just heard. I I I don't know too much about it. I just know. Running hills full speed gets you faster because all those fancy drills and stuff, they end up like they don't – sometimes they don't – sometimes you just got to do what you're going to do in the game because that's going to translate to yeah. the game. And running hills is going to get you faster. It's going to make you more explosive. It's going to make you quicker and all that. So that's 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 how I see it. I don't, that's all I know about it. Like flat hills or like – All of them. <laughs> the, steep the one on, We got one right out there that I need to start running. It's, it's steep. Tie them legs out. Yeah. So I know personal has been a big part of your life, my dukes, man. So uh, what does, what does she mean to you, man? Man, I tell you, she come to every single sporting event. She <laughs> won't miss a sporting event. Uh, she'll record everything. Like I remember, I went out to uh, Tulane this summer, and she recorded. Like I'm working out, and she recorded. I'm like, you don't got to do all that. <laughs> and then, not even. It was actually for uh, it was for Tennessee State. They wanted some videos of me like catching the ball because I ain't have any, so they can see the field. And I, I text her. I'm like, you got the videos from Tulane. <laughs> but I told her not to text. She was like, yeah. And she, you know, she like, I told you. <laughs> like, yeah, she showed up to every game. Uh, she right right behind home plate yelling. Oh, and you you not? I had to, I had to tell. Her, I'm like. Like, I'm up to bat, and she yelling and stuff, and she trying to tell me what to do. I'm like, man, no. Because <laughs> you in my head, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to focus, and she right there behind you. And then, yeah, it's, it's, it's great support. Like, whole family, whole family great support. Sister, mom, grandma, grandpa, all that. The manager, my grandpa right there, man. <laughs> but, yeah, it's great support. It's great having everyone there. Great having my mom there and all that. They keep you grounded, man. Yeah. She want a, she want a house with a... Uh, what you call it? A balcony that wrap around the whole thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, That's amazing, bro. Nothing like having mom there. Yep. Um, so this is a more type of personal question. Um, cause I wanna, 
the biggest thing I want to do with this platform is is to shed a light on like struggles what people go through and uh, still rise to the occasion. What's something if you don't mind sharing that you feel like you struggle with? Could be depression, anxiety, or whatever. Uh, I mean, I don't want to say anything like that, but maybe like just getting overwhelmed at times with a lot of stuff because you you got a lot of people expecting stuff from you. And then you got all the other stuff you want. Then you got some stuff that you just want to do. You got other stuff people want to get out of you. And you're like, and then sometimes you got you got a, like a hard time telling like difference in people like what they want to get out of you, whether they just want to use you for this just to say that they know you, or whether like they there for you type thing. I don't know. Maybe, some, maybe probably something like that. Yeah. How do you how do you manage that? Uh, and recently I just stopped talking to a lot of people because I mean they ain't. If you're not helping me get to where I want to be, then I don't I don't see a reason to why I need to be yeah. going conversing with you and all that. Like you got, when you got goals, you like it's kind of just in the way. Nah, so I'm trying that. like blocking out all distractions. Yeah. So. I'd like to give you any advice, you know what I mean? Like I, like you said, just block out what's fake and you know the real are always, I guess. Show is the kind of natural, mm -hmm. and but biggest thing is just just stand on your grind, man. Head down, you know what I mean. Have fun. Of course, you're only gonna be young. Once I'm telling you, the college is I don't, I maybe maybe a little longer for athletes, but I know when I was in college, it was there, and it was like man, it's gone. Mm -hmm. So I would just say, man, just do you enjoy it, enjoy yourself, work hard, and everything's gonna fall into place for you. Even when times get hard, because it will get harder. Just mm -hmm. you know, what I'm saying, keep faith. You know, what I'm saying, keep mom. She one call away, she might pull up on you or whatever, but just, yeah. Oh, yeah, just don't she ready to come to every single game. <laughs> Blow up. <laughs> <laughs> on the road. Yeah. They don't plan on missing now. They plan on, because they know they already got a game scheduled um, in Texas next year. And they, I think they plan on trying to fly out. Oh, I'm coming to Texas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> Who is, what school is in Texas? Uh, I don't know what school it is, but I just know the games in Texas. They just. I saw a post about it on Twitter. But we do play. We already got Jackson State scheduled, too. We play them in Memphis. That's going to be a good game. We got Travis Hunter out there, man. It's going to be big. And Jackson State, they bringing, you know, they're bringing it different now. They're bringing all the fans because, you know, but for their bowl game versus uh, South Carolina State, yeah, yeah. you saw that it was like um, they had more fans than, like, i say, like, more than 75% of, like, Power 5 schools. So they, they've been selling out like that. Their home games. Yeah, they have about 40,000 people there. Yeah, it's crazy. So I already know that game's about to be something crazy. Just uh, no. Were you saying that, uh, how big was the venue at Tennessee State? Uh, well, I don't know how, I don't, I don't know how big it is at, uh, like, their stadium, because they don't play there anymore. They stopped yeah, playing right, there. Right, so that. they had Nissan right now, so I don't, that's big. <laughs> that's big. That's big. Yeah. I might see if I can make it, make it way. But if I can't, you know, I'm gonna be, hopefully it's on TV and I'm gonna tune in. But, but how do you feel like, What's the running back competition like at Tennessee? Oh, uh, they have a they have a really good backup there right now. He was my uh, he was my host when I went to visit. I had a good time with him. But uh, he tra he's a transfer from uh, Memphis, so he was out there with like, you know, the PWI school. And I remember I was just talking to him about. It. He was like, "Man, if I'm gonna be real, this is where you need to come." He's like, "This is probably the best decision I ever made in my life. I'm having fun up here." getting good coaching and all that. It's probably, and then, like, transferring from Memphis, he's like, I love being around my people. Right. It's just more fun for me. Right. And he's from, like, I think he's from out that way. He's a, he's, a, he's from somewhere in Tennessee. So he he, encur he was definitely a big part. He encouraged me into, like, committing to. So I know, I feel like I, he's like, because he's saying, he's like, you just got to be a four down back. He's like, I can already tell you, like, a guy that can go out there and play all four downs. He knows, like, if he said, if you work hard, even like just for, even if I outplay him, he's like, if you work hard, like, if you showing that you the better guy to start, like, you gonna start. And that goes for like all positions. Like, he's like, there's no like bias or anything, and they gonna put the best player out on the field. Yeah. Yep. And I was talking to uh, somebody who also went to Tennessee State. He was saying like it was the safest he felt because he went to a pre couple of PWIs. Mm -hmm. He was saying he felt the safest on that camp just because you know it's. Got black people around. Yeah. No disrespect to, you know what I'm saying, the other institutions, but you know, what comes, we know how it is, man. Yeah. 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 I already know. Um, last question, man. I, like I said, I appreciate you coming through. You sure. know what I'm saying? Being the first one, I feel like this was a great interview, man. But what's, 
what's some future goals that you got lined up to you that you run it, ready to run through in, in this new year, 2022? Some future goals. Ooh. You ain't written none down yet? I, that's, I, I probably should, but I, some of some off the top of my head, I definitely want to. I mean, I definitely just want. I want to get bigger. Number one, I want to be able. I want to. I want to have all A's. That's that was definitely one of them. I want to have all A's. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can keep that, but uh, that's definitely something else I want to do. And I want to. Um, well, during this is about this is a bit further, but uh, I definitely want to get a lot of as much playing time as I can when I get there and see what I can do. And I definitely I want to sign a um, NIL or NIL. No, it's NIL. I want to sign an NIL because I know they're back there right now. He has one. And I'm like, oh, I want to get in on that action now that I can. So I definitely want an NIL and see what I can do. Get that money, man. Yeah, got to. Oh, man. Like I said, I appreciate you, man. Best of luck to you, man. Yes, we'll, sir. We'll do this again, my friend. Got to. Oh, I, I'm glad to be the first one. I'm Enjoy glad to it, kick man. it off. And I bet, I'll make sure I want to come back when it blew up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it blew up, we might have to come to TSU and put some on, man. Oh, bet, bet. So, man, this is the first edition of Tave's story. Until next time, be great.